Hi, everyone. Welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology Virtual College Fair. This session is all about Georgia Technical or Georgia Institute of Technology. So really excited to hear everything that will be shared. Um, before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Our presenters are here to answer any questions at any time through the Q&A. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions happening, so feel free to sign up for more sessions where you registered for this one. It's a great opportunity to learn more um, information about different colleges um, from all our presenters this, uh, today. And lastly, this recording will be available tomorrow at strivescan.com backslash C-A-C-H-E-T. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and kick it to Samantha from Georgia Institute of Technology. Thank you so much. Now I'm gonna need just a second here so y'all can forgive me while we do the little share screen transition and I'll get mine up for y'all and then we'll get going here. Let's see. There we go. All right. So as long as that works, y'all should see just a big old slide that says tech on it. Um, my name is Sammy. I'm a senior admission counselor at Georgia Tech. I'm so thankful that y'all took some time to uh, join us today. And in addition to myself, who will be chatting with you a little bit about who we are and our admission process, you'll also see some other names popping up in the Q&A in the chat, answering your questions, sharing some additional information. Um, so look out for that. Our, our other senior admission counselors and, and uh, assistant directors here. Um, and with that, I think we can go ahead and get started because I want to make sure that I keep you all on track and ready to go. And I think the best place to start is at the beginning, right? So Georgia Tech, we opened our doors in 1885. And now I don't mean, I know it's past the end of the school day for us. And so I don't mean to bring you back into a history lesson, but let's start there for just a second, right? 1885, we're past sort of the Civil War era when, when Georgia Tech, or excuse me, Atlanta was, was burned down, sort of moving through the Reconstruction era and into um, the Industrial Revolution, right? So why does that matter? Why, why do we need to think about that? Well, right, as, the, the, as Atlanta and the South was rebuilding and trying to keep up with sort of this progressive new age, right, we needed engineers to rebuild. They needed Georgia Tech, right? So that is the moment in time, the space and place that Georgia Tech um, entered and, and, and became who we are as we were created to be a place that creates change, creates progress, uh, tackles challenges and asks questions. And that's still very much who we are today. So over the next few months, you're going to think a lot, right, about fit and you're going to hear a lot about fit from colleges, right? And I know you might think about that in the physical and more logistical sense, right? Where, you know, is it a city or is it rural or so on and so forth? Uh, big campus, small campus, do they offer my major? That sort of thing. But I also hope you think of fit in terms of the campus culture, right? And whether that resonates with you. So for example, at Georgia Tech, Right, our students, again, are innovators. They ask why, right? So if you ask why, that's a good fit for Georgia Tech. If you see a problem, ask why, and then also ask how. How do I fix that, right? How do I create change? That's a good fit for Georgia Tech, right? If you like to recognize and leverage your own strengths, but also recognize the strengths of others and together create something better, that's a good fit for Georgia Tech, right? That is what we do. It's who we were created to be. And today we take our students and staff and alumni and launch them out in the world to create change in the name of progress and service, right? So progress and service, that's our motto. Two words, so easy to, uh, you know, put back in the, in the back of the mental filing cabinet there. We are creating change and moving the world forward but we need to do so with the needs of the communities around us in mind and bring them with us, right? So there is a strong sense of 
purpose and identity at, at Georgia Tech. And I would say that sort of we're going to start by building a strong foundation to, to what you know and what you're passionate about right inside the classroom and, and on campus. Let's, since we're sort of in this virtual format here together, let's talk a little bit about campus. And I've got a few monitors going, so I hope you don't mind if I, if I look to the side here. So Georgia Tech is a mid-size public institution. And I know mid-size can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. So let's unpack that for a second. So in terms of physical size, right? You got about 400 acres, 400 football fields, um, contiguous acres, right? And that means that everything that you need is encompassed right on campus. Your housing, your dining, your athletics, your academics, all right there for you. Um, and then you look up and the city is right around you. Within that space, you have about 16,000 undergraduate students. All right, so yeah, I would say that's about mid-sized. Now, those students are, as you bring your eyes up, studying a combination of 36 different majors. And that's probably not a lot as compared to what you're used to hearing about, right? And, and that is intentional. And one thing we find about our applicants is that they've done their homework. You know who you are, right? And then you're gonna also come to know who we are and, and if that's a match, right? So you'll come to understand sort of our, our curriculum and, and go to college, go to Georgia Tech for specific reasons with intentions in your career and, and moving forward in your passions and your intellectual curiosities. So with that being said, when you see, you know, 36 different majors, we understand that we are by no means all things to all people. And we don't intend to be, right? When we think about what we offer at Georgia Tech, we think about, you know, what are our strengths, right, as an institution? And what does the world need, right? Again, creating change, creating progress and service. And if we can find value in both answers to those questions, that's something that we're going to offer. All of our majors are going to be BS Bachelor of Science degrees and all are going to have those threads of research and innovation and technology. And all of them are really important to who we are as an institution, right? Whether you're the engineer who builds something or the computer science student who codes it or the business student who markets it or the public policy student who helps them understand the policy and the bigger worldview behind this new innovation and so on and so forth, right? It is a really collaborative campus. And again, all of these majors are really important to complementing each other and creating a collaborative environment. Now, going slightly right, moving across our screen here, you can see that Georgia Tech has a 97% retention rate. And you're gonna hear the retention rate pop up quite a few times probably from different schools sort of over the course of the next month, few months, few years, wherever you are in this journey. And so again, let's go ahead and unpack that. A retention rate is a percentage. It is the percentage of students who came to a school for their first year and stayed through to their second year. So while no school has 100%, the national average, I believe, is at about 67%. And 97% puts Georgia Tech within the top oh, 25 schools in the country or so. I think six of those, including Georgia Tech, are public. So what does this mean? Why are we talking about this? Why is this significant, right? So this is one indicator that schools might use to, as a measure of student success or a student satisfaction, right? Because they're, they're invested in their studies, in their community, and they're coming back, right? So what, what I take this as when I look at this number is that Georgia Tech is doing a good job of supporting students uh, academically, with their careers, on campus, so on and so forth. Correct, uh, excuse me, connecting them to a larger network, um, supporting them socially, emotionally, and making them feel again like they're moving forward towards you know successful and productive productive prospects after graduation. Um, a lot of that success needs to start, though, of course, 
right now, right here in the classroom, right? And so if we go down to that bottom number here, you're gonna see that the vast majority of our classes have fewer than 50 students. And so I think that's really a good sort of number and an important question to be thinking about as you're applying and you're searching and you're deciding um, on schools is what does that actual classroom experience as a, as a student look like, right? And does that vary from year to year or, or major to major? And a lot of time I get asked, you know, faculty to student ratio, a student to faculty ratio, however you might say that, um, which is a fine number to ask, but perhaps not the most telling for some schools who have a lot of faculty that are off doing research and perhaps not spending as much time in the classroom. So when we think about your time in the classroom, right, uh, that's a great thing to illustrate your experience. Our most common class size, if we wanna break this down even further, uh, is 26 to 33 students. So you have access to your faculty in the classroom and of course outside and after the classroom and things like office hours as well. But just as important as what you're learning inside the classroom is how you actually have the chance to apply it, right? And so we go back to how we were founded is that our students were, were learning and then they were go out and going out and building and, and creating and moving the world forward, right? That's where we started as we talked about and that's what you'll still do today though. <laughs> It'll look a little bit different than 1885. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you're seeing here, all designed to, again, connect you to that world that's so much bigger than you, than us at Georgia Tech, right? It's part of our job to help you create that network. So let's start here in sort of the middle and the bottom of the screen that you're seeing here when we think about how our students are working with different companies. So a lot of students don't, don't, you know, you might not realize that when you come to Georgia Tech, you'll not only automatically have an academic advisor, but you'll also be assigned a career advisor and the career center as a whole, where they're going to help you with resume critiques, mock interviews to prepare for real interviews, um, they're going to do information sessions, they're going to do workshops, they're going to have hundreds of suits in the basement of our building because suits are expensive and you might not bring one to Georgia Tech. And so we need to be prepared. We need to make sure our students are prepared from A to Z for stepping in front of those recruiters, whether it's at those interviews or career fairs, so on and so forth. Now, when recruiters are coming to campus, yeah, sure, they might be looking for students to fill jobs after graduation. But as we're talking about here, that experience starts while you're still at Georgia Tech, where you might take advantage of hundreds of companies who are interested in uh, employing you for co-ops and internships. So let's break that down a little bit because I know a lot of us might not be super familiar with co-ops. Um, let's start with internships, right? Internships we tend to be a little more familiar with. That's going to be your one semester work experience, right? It might be full time, it might be part time, um, but generally, right, you're going and you're working for a company for a semester. Co-ops are going to be a full time work experience where you are going and working for that company. And while doing that, you are not taking classes. So you're not paying for classes, right? But you're actually getting paid as a real employee in maybe the company or the industry or the area that you were excited to explore after graduation, but you're gonna do it now. Now, the difference between this and say a full-time internship is that you're going to go back and do that three times with the same company. So you're gonna work for a semester, uh, then you're gonna come back to campus and study for a semester. Work, study, work, study. Right? So we typically think of co-ops as four years of, of studying on campus and then one full year of actual experience um, in, a, in a workplace 
by the time you graduate, which is a ton of experience to bring with you. And it makes our students really, really competitive after graduation. So internships, co-ops, they're, they're generally not required by most majors, but they're really valuable experiences because we'll talk about a little bit later that they can help you sort of reinvest in yourself and your education. They can get you that real work experience. They can get you job offers or you can use them to leverage job offers. And so you'll see why those are really popular, right? Ultimately, we have the largest voluntary co-op program in the country. Voluntary doesn't mean you're volunteering your time. No, 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 remember you're getting paid. <laughs> it just means it's not a requirement before graduation. So you can do these work experiences right around Atlanta. I mean, as Shelby, Mariana, Netta, and I, we work across the street from the Coca-Cola headquarters, right? So you have a lot of students working there. You can do them around the country. You can also work abroad. You can also study abroad as you're seeing right here on your screen and disproportionately our students are choosing to do those that. So I know it's gonna, the numbers are gonna be impacted in the coming years, I'm sure, because students haven't been studying abroad as of late. Um, but traditionally about 58% of our students would have an international experience before they graduate. So we talked about working abroad, we've seen students do research abroad, studying abroad, what you're seeing on, on, on your screen, that might be as an exchange program where you go and you know study with another university and you come back with those credits. That might be a Georgia Tech faculty-led program where our wonderful faculty travel with a great group of students and they go around together and do sort of excursions and, and experience the area that you're in and they study with the Georgia Tech faculty at different camp, uh, campuses worldwide. Or we also have Georgia Tech campuses internationally. We love our abbreviations. Uh, so GTL, Georgia Tech Lorraine, that's our campus in Metz, France. And then we also have a campus in China. And then the last thing you're seeing on your screen here is research and about 40%, I believe, of our undergraduate students are doing research. And so that's a really wonderful way to apply what you're learning inside the classroom in the area that you're really passionate about um, in your major. Or maybe you want to do some research in another area, right? Maybe you have a secondary interest that you're not, you know, isn't has to do with your major. And so you can do that as well. So there are all sorts of ways to extend what you're learning about inside the classroom. Atlanta itself is also very much um, an extension of our students' experience. And so again, I know sort of we're, we're in this virtual environment and I hope you guys get the chance to, you know, visit Atlanta because it is a wonderful, wonderful city. I've enjoyed it for the past few years here. I'm originally from um, up north in Connecticut. And so what I can tell you about Atlanta is it is, I mean, it's sort of like a, it's a city that has an urban sprawl, like neighborhoody feel in a, in a way. And the nice thing about being founded in, in 1885 um, is that we were able to establish that contiguous traditional campus, create our own space, right? and then see the city kind of build up around us. And so you get the best of both. You don't have to choose, right? Whether you want the traditional college campus experience or the city and all that that has to offer in terms of fun things as a student and resources and, and opportunities, you get both, which is just the absolute coolest thing. So, our, our students' experience, as you're seeing on your screen here, is absolutely enhanced by the presence of, you know, Fortune 500 companies around us, startups around us, of nonprofits around us. A lot of these larger companies are actually setting up shop right at the corner of campus in an area called Tech Square so that um, they can interact with our students, right? So you're, we're thinking about um, companies like Chick-fil-A, Boeing, Home Depot, um, Panasonic, so on and so forth. They create something that are called innovation hubs in an area called Tech Square or Technology Square, if you wanna look into that, um, so that you all can work with them and they can work with you on your home turf because they know the, the quality of, of student that you are at Georgia Tech and they want to be able to create those opportunities with you. 
Now, I don't want to just give it the idea that it's a it's a good place for work opportunities, right? It, uh, it, Atlanta, like I said, is also just a wonderful, fun place to spend your undergraduate career. I think Shelby, Mariana, and Netta and I have all have our different favorite things that we love to do um, in the city. <laughs> for me, hands down the botanical gardens, right? Um, love the aquarium. You have the all sorts of different museums, music venues, theaters, sort of art districts, food. Oh my goodness, so much great food right within a walking distance of you. And so it's a really, really wonderful place to, to come and explore. And then when you're ready to go back to campus, you have that really wonderful, vibrant community of 500 different student organizations and Division I athletics and different student networks to support you there as well. And then the last thing I'll say here is that when you're ready to even go further, right? We have the, the world's busiest airport in Atlanta. So it's really easy for you to get out and explore. But also let's connect back to what we were just talking about, right? It's also easy for those recruiters and for people to come and access you. So that is really important and that's really great. So let's take a minute here. I'll, I'll take a look at any sort of lingering questions if y'all want to let me know if there's there's any. And then I know they're also answering them too because now we're going to switch gears to talking a little bit about admission, which it looks like most of your questions are about. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, and talk about those things then. Okay, so we're going to switch gears now, right? Mentally kind of switch gears. We've reached the halfway point. So we're moving from different opportunities on campus, the Georgia Tech ethos to talk a little bit about the admission process. I'm going to throw a bunch of buzzwords at you here, right? We're going to talk about what it means to apply to an institution that is holistic, right? And selective. So a selective institution that uses a holistic admission review process. There's two kind of big chunks that I want to unpack from that, right? When schools talk about being selective, right? What they mean is that they have more applicants, more qualified applicants applying to the school than they have room for in the first year class. So many selective colleges, Georgia Tech included, will use a holistic review process when reviewing applications. So that means multiple computers, some of the, the people that you're talking to here today um, will review your application in order to render a decision based off of sort of different factors that you're going to send to us. So let's take, whoop, let's see if that's gonna scroll. It's gonna, hopefully it doesn't scroll like 10 times now. <laughs> let's take a look at what those are. So the first factor that we're going to review uh, is your academic preparation. And we always think about this within the context of your high school. That is so, so important um, because we wanna learn what was offered at your high school, um, what you decided to take and how you performed in those courses. So that's so important because we know every school has a slightly different curriculum, right? You have school, you have all the abbreviations. Some schools use AP, some schools use IB, some use, schools use DE, dual enrollment, um, magnet programs, uh, Cambridge system, national, you know, so on and so forth, right? You've got a whole sort of different menu buffet sort of situation available to different schools. And so we need to understand again, what was available to you. To do that, we are going to typically receive something called a school profile from your counselor. They're gonna send it to us to understand a little bit about your high school and a little bit about the curriculum. So then we can understand what you took within the context of what was available to you, where you chose to challenge yourself and how you performed in those courses. When you apply to Georgia Tech, Though you're not admitted to a major, ultimately, you can, on your common application, identify a primary and secondary major that you're interested in. And that's going to give us a lens to your interests, your passions, you know, your, your strengths. And that would be true academically as well, right? So we might see that your intended major eventually will line up with 
what your courses look like and again, where you challenged yourself. And the, the last thing I'll say here is, is that we don't wanna see that you're challenging yourself just for the sense of challenging yourself for gatekeeping in the admission process, right? That's not the point. We do recognize and, and we don't shy away from the, the sense that Georgia Tech is a challenging academic environment. And so we hope to see that you have challenged yourself and you've demonstrated a foundation in high school that shows us that you can navigate that. All right, so this next thing that you're seeing here, contribution to community, is not necessarily like a headline or a header that shows up um, on your common application. You're probably going to see something like extracurriculars and honors and things like that. But we think about it in our admission office and in our review as contribution to community, right? You have the things that you're doing in your school, that's one community, but we want to make sure that you're not leaving out the other things that are so important to how you're spending your time outside the classroom. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the bigger picture, right? Not only your clubs, but what you're doing sort of at large around town or sort of in your academic area of interest. I'm sure a lot of you this year will have things that you've that have changed and shifted and you have time that you're spending and obligations with your family, so on and so forth. So how are you contributing to your community, right? How are you creating impact there, right? And I think there's also something to be said about how have you been impacted by the things that you've done over the past few years and how you've grown with those things, right? Where do you spend your time. We'd love to see sort of what your hobbies, what your interests, your passions are, and even where you lose track of time, right? What, what, what do you love to do so much that you look up and it's three hours later, right? We love to learn about those things. Where are you a leader, right? And I think leadership can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. It does not always mean being the president of an organization, right? So um, learning about your sense of leadership and, and how you would be a leader on Georgia Tech's campus. So that is sort of how we're going to break apart what you've been doing outside the classroom and understanding your contribution there, right? Now, in terms of your essays, this is where I'm going to put a little asterisk, all right? Because we're at an interesting time of year right now where we just, just finished reviewing the students who applied this past year who will join us this summer and fall. So we're currently taking a look at that process and thinking about any you know, changes we might like to make for that year. With that being said, we don't quite have our prompts ready yet. <laughs> Not yet for this year. So if you go on to the personal essays page of like our website, um, it'll show you the prompts for this past group of students. So don't write those prompts yet because I cannot guarantee you that those would be the same prompts moving forward. And I don't want you to write something and then not be able to use it. I would recommend to you that you probably come back to our website and it'll look exactly like this. It has these very same basically uh, line items on how we review applications and take a look at our essays maybe in June or July or so and and you'll have the updated prompts then alrighty but the the essays are our best chance to hear directly from you right because we don't use interviews in our process and so the essays represent your admission counselor's opportunity to hear your voice right to understand your fit to get a sense of your understanding of, of progress and service, so on and so forth. And so that's really what we're going to be looking at in those. I'm gonna keep it high level there for now. And then once we have the essays, we'll come back to that and we'll write a little bit more on our, on our website about sort of tackling those prompts for you. All righty. The other pieces of, of writing on your application are gonna be your recommendations if you choose to submit them. So they're not required. But if you're uh, submitting recommendations, it's one from a teacher who has taught you inside the classroom. That includes a virtual classroom, of course, all right? And, um, and or I should say one from a high school counselor, a teacher and a counselor, all right? So those would be the only recommendations that we look at. And I should say it could be any teacher who has taught you inside the classroom. That's perhaps one of the more common questions I get is like, does it need to be a math teacher or a science teacher? And no, because 
we're going to learn from you and your transcripts about how you did in those courses that relate to your interests, right? What we hope to learn from your recommend, recommender is who you are inside the classroom, right? So how you approach challenges, problem solving, learning, collaborating, right? All those sort of things. That's not necessarily a grade or a project, but it tells us about who you are and who you will be sort of as an academic community member at Georgia Tech. That's what we hope to learn from those recommendations. And any teacher in any subject who knows you well can speak to that. Now, I saw some questions earlier about uh, the SAT, ACT, and while it was optional for uh, the, our folks who just went through this process this past year, uh, that determination has not been made yet. And I, I will add, won't be made at the level of Georgia Tech. Uh, that is something that our statewide board, that's called the University System of Georgia, um, will decide. So right now we're sort of in the, in the process of, of showing them and letting them know how uh, this past year went with our test score optional process to assist them in, in their making of their final decision. Now, if you choose to submit test scores, that is self-reported, um, or you can send official test scores, but self-reporting is free and easy, and you can type in your test scores right on your application, right? Easy peasy. If you, I know testing opportunities are limited right now, right? But if you do manage to get multiple seats and multiple tests, then we will super score, right? So we'll add together your best sections of over different uh, testing dates. We won't use the writing portions of the tests. What other fun facts am I missing? I think more important than any fun facts <laughs> is the sense of how we use testing, right? And that is that um, it's rather tertiary to our process. It is so much more important for us to understand who you've been in and outside the classroom through your academic preparation, through your contribution to community. That tells us such a larger story about who you'll be on our campus. But testing just to confirms, tends to confirm what we already know about you, right? And it, it's, it's rather insignificant in our, just to be super blunt in our, in our decision-making process, right? So while I know that tends to be what I get the most questions on, it's actually not what we're the most focused on. So I hope sort of as you're looking at the big picture of application review that you can sort of remember that and carry that with you. Now, earlier I said we don't use interviews and you're looking at this slide and it says interview on it. So I know <laughs> that's a little confusing. We don't do interviews, right? Any, uh, our, our admission staff doesn't, our alumni don't. We don't do like those informational interviews that you might do with other schools. What you're seeing here on your screen is strictly a third party informational interview for students who wish to prove their English language proficiency. Um, and that's really all it's used for. And if that might be of, of interest to you, if English isn't your first language, uh, if you go onto our website, this section of our website on first year application review, you can learn a little bit about, uh, more about that video service and, and what that might look like for you moving forward. So everything we've talked about so far is something that you submit, right? It's something that you send to us, it's a piece of the application. And then this last thing that you see here, this institutional fit is not necessarily something that you submit, but it's something that exists nevertheless, right? And that is that sense that we talked about our identity and who we are and progress and service and all that good stuff, right? And Georgia Tech. And so we asked you to consider your fit into that and we're gonna do that as well, right? So thinking about students who are a great fit for that, that campus culture, right, who bring together dynamic and diverse experiences, backgrounds, passions, interests, so that when you're at Georgia Tech, right, you can meet all sorts of those thought leaders who share your interests and your passions and you can grow with them. But I think just as importantly, students who don't, right, and you can learn from them. So that's what we're doing when we review your application is just remember that it's in one application in the larger application pool. And so we're building a class and we're shaping a class and looking at that fit at the institutional level. A couple last few things to look at here. I'm not gonna spend as much time on this slide because the dates are gonna shift a little bit. These are the dates from last year, but overall what you can take away here is that you have three application plans. None are restrictive, 
That means that when you're applying to Georgia Tech, you can apply to any other, you know, schools you'd like. And none are binding. That means we don't have early decision. When you get your Georgia Tech decision, the ball is back in your court. You're not committed to Georgia Tech. You can choose to accept or decline your offer. All right, so you're seeing two early action, right? Just applying early, again, non-restrictive, non-binding. Which date applies to you depends on whether you're a Georgia student by residency and, and where you attend high school or not, if you live anywhere else in the world. And then regular decision, right? Exact same review process, exact same review process for these two. The only difference I would say is that if you're interested in being automatically considered for merit scholarships from Georgia Tech, you'll want to apply early action, right? And we're just using your application for admission from that. And they're competitive and limited, but they're considered an early action um, one and two. I couldn't talk there for a second. <laughs> All right, wrapping up here, um, we talked a little bit about how students might pay for, well, let's, let's start with actually the right-hand side of your screen. So we talked about how we're a public institution in the state of Georgia, right, earlier. That means that you're seeing this differential in tuition, whether you're a student in Georgia or outside of Georgia, right, and this is a sticker price. For most students, it's not necessarily an out-of-pocket price. So in addition to applying for admission, you also might be applying for financial aid through our financial aid office. And then in addition to what they're sending you, uh, our students are often taking advantage of these creative ways to pay. So this is what I was going to talk about right here. And this is sort of what we already started to talk about, right? That our students might help pay for their, their coursework and um, support their sort of education through uh, the money they make from co-ops or internships. You can get paid for research, for part-time jobs, um, and then you can bring outside scholarships to Georgia Tech as well, right? So ultimately, right, th there's all sorts of ways that you can be paying, but then the, the other thing to think about is that, again, these are ways to get really good experience and apply what you're learning and that means that our students are really well prepared for after they graduate. So about 87% of our students are walking across that graduation stage with job offer in hand with an average starting salary way above the national average. So you're seeing here about $74,000. All right, so um, if you grab your phone, you can just use your regular old camera. I'm gonna have you bookmark just one page and that is this extra sort of different virtual visits that you can take advantage of. And I know there is a lot of screen time that you've got going right now. And so you can, a lot of these are pre-recorded, so you can take advantage of them whenever you have a moment, whenever, you know, whenever it works for you. But you have academic and department webinars. So, right, we just quickly talked about financial aid, right? If you wanted a whole session just on financial aid, you can go to their webinar and learn more about that. Or just about the College of Computing, or sciences, or so on and so forth. You can learn about that. We also have our tour guides doing virtual tours there. Um, you have information sessions just like this, right? Pre-recorded and live. So if you wanted to brush up in a few months down the line, that's fine too. <laughs> but lots of opportunities there. And then if you perhaps want to sort of in passively engage over the coming months, um, I would say social media, and I'm biased because I do our social media, <laughs> but I would say our social media is a great way to take advantage of that. So for example, tomorrow on Instagram, which is GT admission, hear from students, right? They're way better experts than, than we are in admission because they're living that experience right now. And so they're going to do a takeover and tell you a little bit about their experience, right? That's what we aim to do is give you a sense of face and place on campus through Facebook, through Instagram, through Twitter, um, in a way that maybe is harder to do with websites and brochures and things like that. So I would totally, totally encourage you to take advantage of that. But if you just have like a lingering question or something, you can absolutely message there. But then also um, all of our admission counselors have access to this admission at GaTech address. I know I'm always the type that leaves a meeting and then thinks of the 10 questions I should have asked. And so if that happens after we hang up today, that's okay. <laughs> Please feel free to just shoot us a quick message and we can follow up with you that way. 
Let me take a look at if you have any questions and, and perhaps in our in our group me they can um, I'll see if there's any questions. Let me see. Sorry, I don't mean to like be leaving you all in silence. <laughs> Sammy, sorry, I'm, I'm going to jump on and help you say them live. Uh, I'm going to tell you to you live. Our first question is, um, we got a couple of these. Do you apply to a specific college? Uh, how easy is it to transfer from one major to the other? Or do you apply to Georgia Tech as a whole, if you can talk about that? Perfect. Thank you so much for coming on. That is way easier than what I was trying to do. Yes. <laughs> Gives you time to drink some water. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at this big old thing. So um, let's start back with where we were and then build up off of that, right? So when you apply to Georgia Tech, you are going to, sure, on your application, put a primary and secondary major and throughout the admission review process, that will help us give a sense to what you'd like to do, what you want to do, what you have done, right? Let's say like that it might align with your interests inside and outside the classroom. But then when you get your admission decision letter in hand, it will not have your uh, major on it. You will be admitted to Georgia Tech as a whole, all right? After, as it stands now, right after depositing, Students then, the ball is back in your court. You declare the major that you've decided on um, that you're gonna be enrolling in at Georgia Tech um, so that you're ready to go with that major by orientation. So that is sort of the initial major process with Georgia Tech. Is it easy to transfer majors? Yes, absolutely. And actually a good portion of our students do because there's going to be majors and things that, and, and sort of, uh, subjects at Georgia Tech that you may never have really explored in high school, right? You, you might have an overall sense of engineering, sure, but you might not have done some major coursework in material science engineering, right? One of my favorite majors on campus. It is the coolest, but not many high schools offer coursework in that, but we do, and you might fall in love with it. So we need to make it easy for you to transfer to whatever major because your interests might change or might grow. So after your first fall, right, then opens up an unrestricted major change period where you can change your major, you know, from any major to any major, right? It's even if it's in a different college, so on and so forth. Every student gets one free unrestricted major change up until 60 credit hours. That's about after your sophomore year, at which point you can still change your major, but it's less of the unrestricted and more so, okay, let's start having you talk to your academic advisor about this because we still wanna make sure you're on track for graduation. So that's what that's gonna look like. Yes, absolutely. You can you can explore and change majors. Maybe we have one minute, Netta, if there's another question. That yeah, I last question is what kind of student is good for Georgia Tech? So maybe you wanna kind of answer that quickly um, if you can. <laughs> yeah. So we talked a little bit about sort of the asking why, asking how, right? If you are sort of an, an innovative thinker, it, that's a great fit for Georgia Tech, right? If you like to collaborate, I'm just gonna list off a bunch. <laughs> if, you, if you are collaborative, right? Um, that's a good fit for Georgia Tech. And then I would say, right, the skill it, to like be successful, right? Uh, in, in our academic, uh, courses. This comes straight away from our student uh, center for academic success, right? If you independently have the skill, sort of the will and the self-regulation, the self-regulation to sort of explore your passions, right? Independently, that's, that's a good fit for Georgia Tech, right? So again, right, creating positive change, if that is something that resonates with you, we hope you continue to learn about Georgia Tech, take advantage of some of these visit offerings um, so that you can, we can hopefully sort of continue this conversation over the coming months. All right. Anything else? I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. 
Awesome. Thank you so much uh, to Samantha and um, all those who are managing uh, the Q&A and the chat. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, it's always great to hear um, all the great information you shared so far. Um, and for those who are submitting those last minute questions, don't worry. Um, Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech will um, follow up with you after um, they get a chance to get all those questions. So don't worry at all. Um, but thank you to you all. And thank you to each of you for joining us. We really um, appreciate you all being here. Uh, as we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback will be greatly appreciated. There are more sessions happening, so feel free to sign up for more sessions where you registered for this one. And lastly, this recording will be available tomorrow at strivescan.com backslash C-A-C-H-E-T. Again, thank you and have a great night.